Alrighty, people, I have some tank gameplay for you, some helicopter gameplay for you, some doom buggy gameplay for you, and me just walking around getting my butt kicked gameplay for you. Alrighty, bringing you some obliteration this time, Battlefield 4. And I'm sure by now all of you have seen the Battlefield 1 trailer. Don't know if you're looking forward to World War 1 or not. I am. I like the more historic or nostalgic battles, the present day and future stuff. Don't really doesn't really entertain me as much. So that being said, I appreciate Dice bringing us a World War 1 shooter. So I'm going to take the opportunity, because people are going to be talking about World War I a lot, I'm going to take this opportunity to tell you stories from that time period. So what are we looking at here? 1914, 15, 16, 17, 18, right in that area, that, de that decade, 1910 to 1920. What was going on in the world? All right, story number one, and I'll interrupt my story so I can comment on the gameplay. We'll see how this plays out. Story number one, titled Lights, Camera, War. What happens when a commanding general goes into the movie business? In January of 1914, Mexican revolutionary Pancho Villa made headlines, not with a battle or a, or a fiery speech, but with something very different, a movie contract. Villa signed a $25,000 contract with Mutual Films, giving them exclusive rights to cover his army. According to its terms, all other cameramen were banned from coming on Villa's campaign, and the general was guaranteed a percentage of the gross. All that without an agent. Four cameramen were dispatched to join up with Villa's army. The general obligingly held off an attack on the town of Oinaga, O-J-I-N-A-G-A. -A. I'm sorry, my Spanish is terrible, if non-existent. Anyway, he held off the attack on the town until they got there, the cameraman, until the cameraman got there. He also agreed that if Mutual couldn't get good enough pictures during actual battles, he would stage them. Mutual decided to make a film about Villa's life, and the general agreed to play himself, even though he was still leading an army in battle. Mutual felt Villa's sloppy old clothes didn't come across well on film, so they gave him a snappy new uniform he was, to, he was happy to wear. Let's take a little break here. I'm chasing down this uh, armored vehicle carrying the bomb, and yeah, there's absolutely nothing we can do about it. But just wait. I'm being patient. Uh, we're not even firing at it. We're just being patient, waiting our time. And what we're waiting for is for him to deliver the bomb. And then hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we'll take him out. So I do not line up foul well enough. He doesn't get a good enough shot, thanks to my inadequate driving. But anyway, grenade falls short. They get the bomb planted. Uh, I do end up taking out the one guy remaining. But check this out. <laughs> Go to defuse the bomb. I'm in the wrong spot. You can tell how often I play this. All right now, it looked like I defused it, right? I thought it did. So I think I have the bomb. I start running away, and guess what? I don't have the bomb. I have no idea what happened there. And then I die. All right, back to my story. When producers complained that executions at dawn were too hard to film, Via moved the shootings to later in the day, when there was better light. A location manager's dream. <laughs> Can you? Holy cow, I can't believe any of that. One journalist called it the war waged to make a movie. In reality, it was Via's way of trying to finance his revolution and generate some good PR. The general was portrayed in Mutual's movies as a hero until his invasion of the U.S. in 1916. After that, he became a first-class villain. That's show business. Alrighty, one thing you will notice, seeing how, or one thing you will notice for those of you that watch my videos a lot, excuse me while I put my book away, my landings are still rough. 
I can't gent I am unable to gently land the helicopter. I'm sitting here waiting for someone to pick up that bomb and get on the darn helicopter. Hello, people. I don't play this very much, but at least I know that much. There, the guy finally gets on. Sorry, engineer, I'm not gonna give you the points. We got we got a bomb to deliver. And unfortunately, I'm not able to talk to that blue belly because he jumps out of the helicopter earlier than I wanted him to. I wanted to take it all the way over to <coughs> excuse me, Charlie. He's out of it now, so I'm going to try and provide air support, but I lined that LAV up real nice with a shot that I'm not even going to show you. <coughs> Excuse me, still trying to get over a cold. Okay, so another strategy. Someone picks up the bomb, watch their back. Keep the bad guys off of them, right? Well, shooting your, your teammates in the back of the head doesn't help you any. And, oh, can't breathe. And shooting the railing, that doesn't take the enemy out. So I, 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 do I finally get him? I don't get him because, are you kidding me? And guess what? I'm out of bubble gum. Alrighty, folks. That happens to be the end of the round. Alrighty, people. That is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the little history lesson. There will be more to follow. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, folks, play hard. Life is just too damn short not to. I'm going to go through this whole menu thing and look at all these points that don't matter to me anymore. You all take care, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye, all. A squad, baby.